to YouTube community. My name is Thomas and welcome to this countdown to the Eurovision Song Contest 2018. This is the weekly program where I will react to and review all the songs that are going to compete in this year's contest. I do three each week and this week the time has come for Croatia, Iceland and Georgia to receive my honest review. But before we go on with the songs, let's check out the scoreboard from last week. Even though the highest rated entries wasn't affected on the scoreboard, I still found myself a new favorite entry last week. BULGARIA was perfect in so many ways that it have all the chances in the world to at least reach my top 3 after I've seen them live at the semi-finals. Can they copy Estonia's perfect score? Well, I freaking hope so! But before we will find out and which 7 entries left, Estonia are still my number 1. In last week's hunt to find the best entry ever in this contest, I placed Norway's Noctuden from 1995 up against Serbia's Molitva from 2007. The first hours of this poll started out as a single player game, as Serbia immediately took the lead and kept going until it had Norway down on its knees. Norway then took grip on Serbia and started pulling its way back up until it had Serbia's back right in front of them. But Serbia resisted and eventually won this poll. And that means Serbia are the fourth country out of five that will fight for the title, the best entry ever in the Eurovision Song Contest, voted by you guys. This week's battle of the last one before we go on with the final round. And if you have been following this series, it shouldn't come as a surprise that this battle are between Belgium 2017 and Finland 2006. Some say I might have been a bit rough on Belgium on this one, but does it really matter who you meet? Because in the end we are gonna have only one winner. And in order to become that winner, you have to beat them all anyways. So again, does it really matter who you meet? I don't think so. And I'm not saying Belgium doesn't stand a chance against Finland here. It was voted in as 1 out of 10 nominees after all. And since it's also fresh from last year, I bet many of you that voted for the song last year are watching this right now. So if you people stand strong together and vote, you might have a chance to beat the Finnish monsters. They, on the other hand, became one of the most legendary Eurovision winners ever, when they shocked almost every single Eurovision fan out there with heavy metal in Eurovision and costumes that looked like they were taken straight out of a big budget horror movie. This was something we had never seen before in the contest, and in the end they didn't only win, but they also sliced and diced and butchered the other entries by setting a new record for points gained during the final. Whoever your favorite are, start voting now up here, not in the comment section, up here. Remember that, up here. And as always, you have three days. The first country up today are Georgia. Georgia is a rather new country in Eurovision. They had a debut in 2007 and have been entering the contest each year ever since. They have two times as number 9 as their best. This happened in 2010 with the song Shine and 2011 with the song One More Day. And even though they haven't reached the highest part of the list yet, they have at least had some interesting entertaining performances. And some have actually also been extremely good. I know very little of what they have for us this year, simply because their song doesn't seem to be the topic of many discussions this year. And when you look at the odds, you might also see the reason why. Sadly, it's not looking good for you this year, Georgia. But for my sake, that can be a good thing, because I'm not not expecting much right now. I might get positively surprised. So Georgia, let's see what you have for us. Okay, what type of song is this now? It was called Etnoyas. Smooth, isn't it? Can I call this Jesse Oprah? Is that your thing? I don't know. Wow, this was really unique. This was special. Extremely special. Huh. It's in some way extremely weird hearing it, but in another way, I also find it extremely beautiful. My body is flooring with emotions right now.
and I'm not sure how to read them. Huh. Wow, that was something different! I don't think this entry from Georgia here can compare to any of the other entries. Maybe Estonia is the closest thing to it. But one thing is so clear, that this is not your typical Eurovision entry. I found this beautiful, I found it filled with emotions, and those grabbed me. Not 100%, but they got something from me, and I got something out of this. So I think I ended up liking it. And in this music video they also had extremely beautiful voices. They sounded extremely good together as well. And from a genre like this, I'm pretty sure they also will deliver well on stage. Because I can't really see a group like this performing well only for a recording. And I um, also believe that this is extremely well-educated musicians. They sang with such a good self-esteem that, yeah, these have been doing this for quite a while. I want to give 8 points to Georgia because I kinda liked it. I'm not loving it. I can't say I love it, but this might grow. It's a typical song that might grow a lot on me. Especially when I see it live in the semi-finals. And since this was a music video, they didn't have a national selection. I can't give out any performance points. So that means I end up giving 8 points to Georgia. Next up, we have my neighbors over at Iceland. Iceland started out in the year 1986, when the contest was held in Norway for the first time. The song was called Glengibunken and ended as number 16, where they also ended the following year. And the year after that. Sick and tired of being number 16, they finally ended that in their fourth attempt, when they ended last. Iceland had a rough start on Eurovision, and sadly that didn't change much up during the years. Even though they have had a couple of good years. In 1999, they came second with the Europop slash dance entry All Out of Luck. And this is a personal best they repeated in 2009 when they sent Joanna and the song Is It True? A song I personally believe are their best entry so far. Or I guess we can all agree that Polopunk has their best song so far. But in order to stay professional, I have to go with Is It True? Because that's what I am, a professional. The 2010s, however, have been treating Iceland more brutal than ever, ending at number 15 in 2014, with Polapunk is actually their best placement so far in this decade. And besides that, we haven't seen them in the final since then either. I'm wishing you all the best this year, Iceland, and sending you a lot of love. Let's see what you have for us. Song was happening. Was that right? Faces you see on your way have a story. That's a great voice. To many are dying the pain. Together we could ease our pain. If somehow So far I can't understand the bad rep this album. So far we only heard his, the guy's voice as well, which is extremely good. It will be a song that will only grow and grow and grow from the beginning to the end. Okay, yeah. Wow! You need to have some good self-esteem to sing with a voice like that. Ah. It's a bit clear for me now what all the negativity about this song is about. For even though the guy has an amazing voice, maybe even one of the best voices in the contest this year, the song went nowhere. For me, this went nowhere. When he started singing, I kinda expected that song that started low and was only building up all the way. It was kinda that song. Uh, it had a little 
course. What do you call it? They call it a bridge, do they? It breaks my heart to say that I found the song pretty boring. It didn't reach me. Not at all, actually. So I'm also pretty sure, Iceland, that this is one of those songs that will perform in the semifinals and stop there. And it really breaks my heart to say that. But Adi himself, he had a great voice, so at least take that from me. I want to give the song three points. Yeah, there have been worse this year for me. So take the three points. And I hope the people from Iceland who are watching don't get too disappointed about that. So I'm not going to talk more about the song, but let's go on with the performance. Because his voice... He scores a lot based on his voice. I'm giving out 8 points for the voice alone. Because that was an extremely well done performance. And that means I give 11 points to Iceland. Last country of today are Croatia. Croatia is another country that had their debut all the way back in 1961, but then as a part of the former Yugoslavia. As Croatia, they had their debut in 1993. The 90s has also turned out to be their best decade so far in the contest, with a 6th, a 5th and two fourth places. They actually proved to be a country to be counted for back then. But after ending 9th in 2000, we never saw them in the top 10 again. Last year, however, they tried something brand new when Shaco Deck brought his friend to the stage. The twist? His friend was inside him. And don't ask me who was who on that stage. I have no idea myself. This year they have a song called Crazy, which are said to be inspired by Sam Brown's Stop. Remember? Stop! If that's the case, I am at least expecting a performance for both my ears and eyes this year. I like it when things are sexy. Croatia, let's see what you have for us. Croatia! <clears throat> What's going on here? Let's see if we can hear that stop song in here. Yeah. I know what they are talking about at least. But this is a standalone song. And it's not even inspired by it, it's just uh, the same type of genre. Or is it? Okay, it has uh, definitely has some simil similarities. But now, focus on the song. For this love knows no reason, no games. Just like Bonnie and Clyde, we walk the road together. No fear, no brakes. You light up my world. That was weird. I need no diamonds and pearls, not that kind of girl. It's definitely a sexy song. It has a couple of other um, other songs this year that can compete against that one, based on that genre, or that type of song. Okay, um, you might hear that I'm not super excited. However, there was elements I liked in here. I really like this type of song, this type of sexiness that uh, goes through the song. However, I mean that Latvia did it better. Latvia. The song was better that way. I think there are only room for one of them in the final. And for now, I think Latvia will take that spot. But it really breaks down to who delivered this best on stage. I think Croatia will do a better deliverance. Because Latvia expressed sexiness through the song, but not with body language. It gave out a sexy vibe without looking like they wanted to do that, if you know what I mean. In this song, they gave out that sexy vibe and expressed it as well. So based on that, maybe Croatia will beat Latvia. I'm not saying this is all about sex, but I'm a dude. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and also a little funny thought experiment I have. Which one would make the best Fifty Shade soundtrack? In that case, you can throw Switzerland in there as well. 
And among those three, Switzerland would make the best Fifty Shades soundtrack. And yeah, I realize now that I have been saying Malta when I meant to say Latvia. In fact, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna reshoot the Latvia part. Latvia. I can use that over the Malta part because that's what I am, a professional. But points. I want to give out points to this. I can only give out points for the song. Since this was a music video, there wasn't a national selection here. Latvia's song, I gave that 8 points. I think this is good enough to get 7 points. So yeah, I'm gonna give 7 points for the song. Meaning there is only 1 point up to Latvia. That can change. That can change. And since this was a music video, they don't have a national selection. I can't give out any performance points before the semi-final. Which means I end up giving 7 points to Croatia so far. That's it for today, people! Don't forget to vote for your favorite entry in today's battle. You can choose between Belgium 2017 and Finland 2006. And I will reveal the winner in the next episode. Which will be the last regular episode this year. But I will of course be back with my updated scoreboard. I will do that somewhere between the second semi-final and the final. It really depends on how long it takes to edit the video. And in that video I will also announce who won the best entry ever poll. Next week's episode will also be a longer episode since I still have four countries left to do. Those are Azerbaijan, Lithuania, Austria and former Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia. Or just Macedonia. I hope to see you then. So until then, take care of yourself and have a nice week. Bye.